Hi traders, this is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for the 26th of September. All right, we're coming into Wednesday's trading and this is really the start of the trade week. Okay, we've got a few uh, releases ahead of the FOMC, but once the FOMC meeting comes on, then there's a load of uh, central bank governors, presidents, chairmen speaking uh, over the coming days, as well as some, some further key US data, Canadian data and uh, some more US numbers. So just looking at where the currencies are, it's, it's looking quite good. The major pairs, Aussie, Kiwi and Euro, pretty much nicely trading in a tight sort of range. That suggests to me that all the current activity, geopolitical, small amount of fundamental news that's come out, has been factored in and the currencies have now found fair value. You look at something like Sterling, which is still trying to recover from that big uh, negative Brexit news last week. It is slowly making its way back up. So it's a little bit less certain exactly where it sits. Uh, you can generally tell when it starts to trade sideways in a tight range that the traders are very happy with the current levels. And that's a good thing because that allows us to, when fresh data comes out, we know exactly what to do. With sterling, it's still a little bit uncertain with Brexit. Uh, Dollar CAD, nicely trading sideways, but uh, you know we've still got NAFTA hanging over that, as well as, I mean, oil and OPEC are doing a few things, but NAFTA is the major concern there. Now, just coming across to what I want to give you a look at, this is actually quite interesting. So if you have a look um, at the general news that's going around, and if I just change the channel there, get you across. All right, so we've got the uh, news up here. Just having a look at what news is going around. Dollar slips ahead of the widely expected rate hike, Fed rate hike. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, you expect a little bit of profit taking. We've got Brexit still hammering away there. Um, Canada, as I said, NAFTA. This is all geopolitical stuff, which is usually more based around fundamentals. But just have a look at this top article, the heading here, dollar slips ahead of widely expected Fed rate hike. Now that's true, the market is expecting a Fed rate hike. But let me just show you what the US dollar has been really doing. Okay, it's just trading sideways. So they're really letting themselves down by sort of trying to drum up interest and say the dollar's falling or slips. I mean, it's, it's off from yesterday's highs, it's off about 10 or 15 points. So that is actually stupid. They should have just said it's trading sideways as we move into the Fed. And I'll come into that Fed in uh, a minute. But so just have a look. So we've got the dollar index just trading sideways, which is really good. But ahead of a major central bank fundamental release, you want to make sure this thing is just cruising sideways because then whatever they do, right, the rate hike is, is expected. If I just scroll down, you'll see the, um, uh, the details there. So with the Fed rate hike being expected, uh, as you can see, it's already, the Reuters poll, it's pretty much 100% factored in, 0.25%. Now with that factored in, the, it will come down to the statement and the press conference what's gonna happen, but any changes here, you'll see a, a move because the currency is already stabilized and it's, it's exactly where it needs to be. Look at the dollar one, now this is, we're seeing a, like crazy moves here, like short-term spikes up, the short-term spikes down. They're not as big as they were when, when the dollar one became a major focus, but it is putting the Wahoo up traders and, and putting them off doing things. So just be aware, if you're trading particularly the Aussie and Kiwi, which is very sensitive to the movements in the one, don't get hung up on uh, just general price action. Okay, focus on the trend lines like you do with the other major pairs, and that's where the activity will be. But I expect it to trade sideways until we get some, start to see some Chinese data. We've got some... Caxton uh, manufacturing data out on Friday. Obviously, the FOMC will be a major point as well. Look at the equity markets, pretty neutral to me. That's um, no major concerns there with the China-US trade issues that seem to have dissipated at this point. Um, there's, and a lot of the other stuff has actually sort of, like, sort of just faded as well. You do get that, especially with geopolitical events. The market becomes desensitized to it. So just coming into the MyFX Trading Hub, Right, just to focus on where the activity is today. Now, first and foremost, what's going on? Well, it's actually geopolitics are overshadowing things, but it's a little bit less today. Okay, I think we're getting closer back to normal market conditions. We haven't heard anything out of Trump or China for a good few days. Um, NAFTA has gone to the wayside as well. Brexit, well, that's still simmering. That is impacting sterling and sterling crosses. But up upcoming events, now this is where you can really tune in. Now, the ANZ business confidence numbers, this is like a very, very low tier number. But the RBNZ, which is uh, having its interest rate decision tomorrow, they highlighted the business confidence numbers 
as being a major concern where it is influencing investment in by locals in New Zealand. The numbers have been minus 40 to minus 50% of confidence, uh, the worst, I think worst ever, uh, for, for some months. And if this continues, then they may have to raise rates. So even though this is a very low tier number, I'll be watching it very closely today because it may give us a precursor to what they're going to do tomorrow. I'd suggest anything under or over minus 50%, we will see a potential surprise cut in interest rates by the RBNZ. Now, let's just come into the, the major event for global markets. Now, the FOMC, right, this is the US dollar is the, is the epicenter of all currencies, but and the central bank of the US is the, the core um, starting point for all financial markets, bonds, uh, whether, you, whether you're talking currencies, bonds, equities, whatever you want to talk about, it all comes from this event. Now, they have done an extremely good job of forecasting what they need to do. They have uh, potentially got two more hikes this year, uh, one now in September and another one in December. They are on track to complete their plan that even um, Janet Yellen sort of set out over a year ago uh, that they would have a certain amount of rate hikes. They are doing a very good job and their economy is coming along for the ride. The numbers aren't showing any major hiccups with these rate hikes. So with that, the rate hike itself is fully factored in. So it will come down to particularly the press conference uh, and the statement as to where the US dollar will go from here and that will impact all major currency pairs. So when you're, when you're reading around the internet today, whether you're looking at uh, various FX commentaries, it will be all based on scenario analysis of if they say this, what happens there, et cetera, et cetera. To me, if they go into a more neutral phase, okay, they've already said, we are coming to the end of our plan. Now that doesn't mean that they just go on hold. They've already suggested that they would let inflation ride a little bit higher, um, above 2% going forwards, which means they're just buying a bit more time before they have to raise rates again. Now, if there's more talk of that or an increased talk of that, well, then you might see the US dollar come off. Now, the market is already factoring in potentially two or three rate hikes in 2019. If there's mention of that, well, then that's going to be bullish for the US dollar. So we really have to wait and see. I'll give you more details as soon as it comes out, give you my interpretation of those events as we go through. All right, so that's the two major things today. So uh, ANZ business confidence numbers, very low tier, but in the current market environment, huge impact for the RBNZ tomorrow. That's what you really want to keep an eye on. So um, just coming down to the major pairs, and as you saw on the uh, technicals there, there's, there's no change in the currencies, which is, as I said, really good leading into a major event. So I've still got the, the um, Euro and Sterling in a bullish sentiment. Uh, the Aussie and Kiwi, surprisingly, is still sideways. Uh, the US dollar slightly bearish, still trading uh, sideways on the hourlies, but on the longer term daily and weekly charts, it has broken down. Uh, dollar yen, ever so slightly on the bullish upward mo uh, movement. Dollar CAD sideways and uh, dollar Swiss, slightly uh, bearish there as well with that US dollar. So that's what we got as we go into uh, today's trading. So it's all about, as I said, connecting the dots. You, you come and have a look at the, um, the overall picture here with regards to the major pairs. We've got, uh, the really good thing is, we've got support and resistance on most of these pairs. Okay, Aussie trading sideways inside a range, Kiwi, Euro. Sterling is sort of doing it, but it's in the middle of a much bigger range and it's, it's got Brexit hanging over it. So I've got a bit of a question mark over that. Dollar CAD is coming back into a tradable situation where we've now got it trading sideways. What we need is really some good Canadian numbers. Obviously, the FOMC will sort that one out there as well. Dollar yen, really, I think this has basically been position squaring because everyone was rushing into the yen with the um, uh, China-US increase in trade tension. But that hasn't happened, and it's now just cruising to the top side. I still expect this thing to blow up at some stage. It's probably going to take the Chinese numbers to get extremely weak and then the uh, discussion with the US get really tense and that's when we'll see dollar yen really come back into play. Otherwise, it may just cruise to the top side. But what you're really looking for is, and this is what you should be doing, if you come back into the overall analysis, if you click on the flags and go into the detail analysis, you'll, you'll see the pairs that have a fundamental and technical perspective. Okay, so when you, when you are looking at some of these pairs, Try and match up the pairs that have clear sentiment 
And that's generally the best trading currency to trade. All right, so if I just come over here to the Euro, now we had Draghi talking uh, a day or so ago. He, he was very hawkish with regards to the sentiment in, um, in the Eurozone. I think it's a little bit you know, naive to think that the Eurozone is coming out of anything, but he was sort of leading towards a potential uh, start of tapering. No change in interest rates for at least a year, but that's where we are. And the outlook is um, technically up, so bullish. So when you come back to look at the, um, the fundamental releases, right, you're looking at trying to match up what's going on. So at this stage, we've got the Kiwi. Yeah, okay, well, the Kiwi is trading a bit sideways. It has a very mixed sentiment at the moment, and I'll give you a look at that in a second. And then you come down to the US dollar because we've got the US FOMC. I'll be concentrating on the pairs here that do have clear sentiment. Okay, bullish, 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 bearish. Uh, these are the pairs that you need to work out. And generally what I'll be doing is trying to isolate the pair that has the best potential trade for a weak, uh, weak comments about the dollar from the Fed or strong comments. Okay, weak comments, obviously the dollar index is in play. Um, and uh, dollar Swiss, because they're already moving lower. So that actually works better. Um, if we get really strong, uh, oh, sorry, I should say as well, bullish, weak comments from uh, the Fed, who also works nicely into the hands of um, Euro and Sterling. If we get some um, really strong comments from uh, about the dollar, then you may see a reversal in some of these, and you, you may see dollar yen really take off to the top side. That's the, the major dollar bullish pair. So I might have confused you a little bit there. But uh, as I said, look, looking at the RBNZ, we've got a very uh, weird situation where we've got a, a bearish uh, or dovish central bank. The data's been pretty neutral and we've got a, uh, an upward bias on the technicals. So at the moment it's sideways, but today we have a key look at the, the major economic data. If that lines up with the central bank, then we may have a potential opportunity. At the same time, there may be a short-term move uh, on Kiwi today on that data, if it's strong, well, then that takes the pressure off the central bank. That may take them into more of a neutral phase. And uh, the bias is already up, so we may see a move to the top side. So it's going to be pretty important today for the Kiwi, for traders in the Asian session, to really focus in on this. Um, this data, if, as I said, if it's above 50%, like it was last month, then we may see a potential or a big move here on the Kiwi as the market preempts a potential rate cut by the RBNZ. I mean, put it this way, if this is above 60%, like epic levels, of, you've got to do something about that as a central bank. And that's where I think the big opportunity in Asia will be. And then you come back down here to, uh, once again, just to give you another run through, uh, the FOMC, don't get all excited when they raise rates. It is expected, okay? Minimum, maximum, like there's 113 respondents here who have put in there, this is all financial companies or banks, Every one of them expects a rate hike because they've already told them that, right? So uh, that's where the rule, so the, so the rule surprise packet's gonna be the statement and or uh, press conference. Jerome Powell has been so steady Eddie and he seems so solid. I don't expect too much out of that. All right, guys, that's it for me for the moment. I'll see you guys in the trade zone. Uh, as I said, the uh, Kiwi data, probably the best opportunity at the moment. Just be aware, liquidity in the Kiwi is extremely thin. So don't get yourself all loaded up. It will move. You're trying to make money out of these, not make the whole lot in one go. All right, we'll catch you later on, guys. See you in the live trade zone. Cheerio.